Hey everybody, long time no see. It has been about six months since I started residency. I'm halfway through my intern year. I wanted to make more videos, but intern year is so difficult. You work so many hours and I just really wanted to focus on being a good intern and kind of just taking care of myself those first six months. Uh, I've done a pretty decent job. You know, there are some really hard days. Uh, there are some really great days. I love my intern class, my chiefs, all the second years that have supported me, all our faculty. In this video, I kind of just wanted to give you guys some last minute match advice. I think this would be useful to hear from somebody that kind of went through it. And now six months into residency, what do I think you should prioritize as match? For those of you who are new here, my name is Aaron. I'm a family medicine resident. My career goals are to be an FMOB in rural practice. I want to have clinic, hospitalist medicine, and labor and delivery training, including C-section, which is why I chose my specific program. The number one thing I prioritized, and I still do not regret it, was the training. I am at one of the few programs in the country where family medicine resident can do high risk of obstetrics and get training to do labor and delivery, vaginal and operative deliveries. I wouldn't change anything about the program where I came, but something that has been incredibly important these last six months is I did move away from my family. I have been living pretty much alone for the last six months. And whenever my family comes and visits me, that is absolutely when I am at my best uh, clinically. Uh, and emotionally that family support is extremely important and I don't want you guys to discount that thought I still Prioritize the training and I know that for a lot of Competitive specialties. It's really hard to take into account family because you're just trying to get a spot in these really competitive positions But if you can stay close to your family and get the training you want that I would 100% recommend you all do that. The third thing is kind of the program culture. And what I mean by this is, so December 24th, I worked a 24 hour shift from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. on the 25th. My car had a flat in the morning when I got up and there was no way to repair it in time before getting to my shift. I texted my chief and she came and picked me up and we went and worked our 24 hour shift. And I want you guys to think about a program that's gonna support you, of course, professionally, but also like if you can count on your chiefs, your co-interns, I know it's really hard to know what your co-interns will be like, but I would highly recommend you guys try and get a feel for that kind of culture within the program. Our program is amazing. Everybody supports each other so much. I think it comes with the territory of probably being one of the harder family medicine residencies that we are all know we're in this like for the long haul and together and we all support each other. We cover each other's shifts. If somebody needs a day off or a mental health day to go to a wedding, to take care of the kid or anything like that, that is a lot more important than you guys think and I would definitely think about that. For something that was really important to me was being able to use my Spanish daily, and I absolutely found that at this program. You know, I see Spanish-speaking patients every single day, along with a lot of refugee and immigrant populations, which is super important to me to be able to serve underserved patients. And kind of along that line, I would Think about the different mentors that are at this program. If they have certain subspecialties or niches that you're interested in, it's really important to find a mentor and go to a training program where if there is a physician that is doing your dream subspecialty, they have your dream lifestyle, try to go to a residency program where you see it in front of your eyes. At this program, a lot of programs claim to be full spectrum, rural training family medicine programs. But when I first came here, literally all of my mentors, they do OB, they do hospital medicine, they do clinic. They actually do full spectrum family medicine. And I know in different areas of the country, the full spectrum programs are, the, the family medicine faculty are not doing everything. And I would encourage that if you guys have a very specific vision for you, what you want your future to be, to find mentors that are doing what you envision. And then last but not least is definitely location. 
This kind of goes a little bit about family support, but also cost of living. I came to a city where the cost of living isn't ridiculous, but when I was looking at certain residency programs, namely in California, I knew rent and cost of living was gonna be extremely high, especially on a resident salary. So that is something to think about. I know it's a lot harder for surgical subspecialties to not take a position or not apply basically to every you know spot there is open but if you have a little bit more flexibility like in primary care um, you know family medicine internal medicine OBG1 is also very competitive nowadays then I would highly suggest you think about the cost of living in the area where you will be doing your training I hope this last minute video was helpful I might try and make more videos I might not I'm not sure yet uh, YouTube was a really big outlet for me during medical school now during residency, I just don't really have the time, energy, the creativity. Uh, my life is focused on other things right now. And that's okay, you know, life ebbs and flows. Uh, this year, I would love to make more videos for everybody, but we'll just see how this year goes. I'll give you guys a little bit more update on how residency life is going probably in some upcoming video. And I'll see you guys until then. Thanks for watching.